Welcome to the Changing Stage Show on Intertalk Media. My name is Florentino, and we are going to have a great day here. We have my good friend, amazing artist, but you're always the Renaissance lady. You are a master marketer. You own magazines. You're a fashion maven. I mean, I don't know if we have enough time to go all over (laughs) all the details that you do. So uh, we have Kayleen Peoples to my right, and she has an artist that she is working with that she's featured in. Agenda Magazine. Let me get this up. Ooh, here we go. Agenda Magazine. Um, and you're helping him with PR and guiding and building a career in, in a new way. So, and that is Gary Lee Rollins. Hello there. No relation to uh, uh, Henry or or Sonny, but hey, you'll use the last name right. <laughs> right. At least you get the spelling right that way. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, and very popular in China because you said you work a lot with Chinese, and the last name Lee is very popular. So anyway, right. little- even though it's my middle name, they sometimes <laughs> still think it's uh, related to a surname. I guess. Exactly. So I guess let's just start off. How did you guys connect? And Kaylin, you do so much. What led you to say, hey, look, let me help this amazing artist take on uh, the, the, all the challenges of you know, a music career in this day and age. Yeah. So how did this all get started? You want to tell him how I met you? Or? Sure. Oh, a good friend of mine is a drummer um, named Brian Cabrera. Oh, yeah, Brian, yeah. Yes, and uh, he's, he told me one day, I've got this other band I'm going to be playing with. I want you to come see. So um, that's how we met. At the Catalina Jazz Club in okay. Sunset. How and long ago was that? That was, was, uh, was I missed that one. October of eighteen. Okay. No, no, was it? No, it was June. Was it six, mm. two thousand eighteen? It was just before I was about to get married. Mm. Oh, that's go right. Go off to Nice. It was the last mm. hurrah because I think we left two days after that. Uh-huh. So it was my it was my uh, practice CD release for Romantic Bossa Nova. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That was the one I was not able to make. That's okay. Yeah, there, we, we there's going to the be another the, one. The Dune, so. Yeah, there's going to be another one at Alva's showroom on February 29th. Awesome. We're actually doing the real one there. Background full, singers and everything. Oh, that'll yeah. be amazing. Well, we'll have yeah. to come out and uh, do yeah. a little, little uh, segment on that one for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so you guys met, and Kayleen, like I said, you are doing magazines. You've got your own career. Your husband, Bunny Brunel, who is part of this, the recording process with you guys, mm-hmm. Uh, is the bass player, you're helping him. What made you think, hey, look, I need to see how I can help change the stage? Yeah, my, my little pun there, sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I told you I love that title. I thought it was incredible, like changing stage, exactly what it is, you know? Yeah, that's still this, this industry is really weird now. So you've got some, some strategies and you've got some methods that you're using to help, uh, you know, help Gary's, you know, uh, career. So talk a little bit about that. What are, what are you going to be doing? Well, um, with Gary, he, Gary hails from Seattle, Washington, and he uprooted, what is two years ago now that you moved? It's two and a half. Two and a half years ago. Um, he came here specifically to really have a career in music. Okay. And um, he was so sweet. I remember at the CD release concert, he gave me all of his product. <laughs> and I also, um, pr- I produce a website called uh, spacefather.com, which is also, it helps emerging talent as well. Wow. I, see, I didn't even know that one. Yeah. It's a uh, social network and everything. And um, basically, uh, I played, I put one of his songs on their little playlist. Okay. And I got some positive response on one of his tunes. Um it's on the one where I think it's. Can you name the songs on the last on the? It's, it's oh, I think like, the tune is Azure. Yeah, it's Azure, Azure. Off my album I recorded when I got to California in Irvine. Here I did a record. So. Yeah, and oh. it was a. Uh, I could hear the talent. I could hear the talent. Awesome. And then Gary and I, you know, Gary 
has come to a lot of my shows and we've had conversations and, um, you know, he really, he came here to really just pursue this career. Like yeah, that's yeah. what he, he, that's why he's here, you know, and I'm sure he's going to tell you his whole story, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, nefarious people out there. <laughs> that's the best word I can think of. Um, that you could steer, you, yeah, yeah, that could steer someone who's not from here, particularly yeah. in the wrong direction. So, I pretty much caught wind of something and thought that I said, you know, I have the resources. I could probably, I could probably get him in the right direction. I mean, it was really, I had no expectations of any kind because I didn't know what was really possible. And our creative team, like the stylist, she, he, he's our like baby. He's our Mm -hmm. guinea pig. Like, (laughs) cause I, Indie Hotspot started in 2007. Wow. It was part of Agenda Magazine. Yeah. And we featured everything from designers to musicians to artists, painters, and anyone who was emerging. Mm-hmm. And the brand was, you have to be of the level of a professional, but you're just indie. So yeah. we were trying yeah. to remove the stigma of the term indie Cause remember what indie used to be? It used to be kind of a garage bands and yeah, kind of rough. Yeah. And rough and a little, Just, very edgy in good and bad ways. Exactly. Exactly. But definitely like not quite polished, yeah. you know, and you could tell it was indie. So yeah. the whole idea was to turn that phrase into something else, turn it into something just because someone's not signed to a label or yeah. signed to a corporation does not necessarily mean that, Without a team, yes, but with a team, you could actually, because that's what a record label is. It's a team. Yeah, but you're under the thumb of the label, where in this particular case, you can be the artist and still do what you're best at doing and have the support. So I get it definitely is, you know, you kind of uh, seen that. uh, That's pretty much where it's at now for for almost all artists. Oh, yeah. even the biggest ones, you, yeah. know? Uh, you know, we've been doing stuff with an artist that's worked with Jason Mraz and that's where Jason's at. You know, he, he can pick and choose who he mm. wants to work with, what he wants to do. He doesn't have to answer to any labels. So, you know, that's, you know, that's a beautiful spot to be in. So, you know, congratulations on that, Gary. You know, I'm very fortunate um, to have met Kayleen and, and it's, uh, I had no idea that she did this kind of work. It, it took, you know, several months before yeah. she even mentioned something like that. So. Also, I feel privileged because I know she's she wears a lot of hats and she's very busy and she only takes a certain amount of clients. So it's not like anybody can walk up, you know, off the street and, and connect like that with yeah. her. So I count my blessings. Yeah, it's like an angel got its wings right now. Right? That's right. Mm-hmm. Little ding ding, we got the wing. It's okay. We all, we all <laughs> have that in our lives. So, um, so yeah, with that said... Um, I know that you have him in Agenda Magazine. You've done a video. We're going to see that here in a few, very few short moments. What are some of the other uh, methodologies that you're using, some of the strategies that you're using to get the awareness for Gary? Well, first of all, um, before we start with anyone, I sit with a potential indie hotspot person for two hours and have them tell me everything about themselves and okay. where what they want. And is that coming out in the interview that uh, that you did with him, or is that something? No, you- it's it's like it's like a briefing. It's like a pre-screening to see if we can even do what they want to do. Yeah. Because sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah. You know, um, and we pretty much like we have a team. So, um, with Gary what was really what was a resounding wish I'll say is he really wanted to do his music. It's like, that was the end all be, that's what he wants to do. You know, he came here for that. He's got a ton of guitars. He's like aficionado yeah. with the, he's quite talented and it's like, that's what he did all his life. And, um, okay. So then we pick the, I, I pretty much pick the brain of yeah. the artist and I kind of see, okay, What's capable, what's not capable, what's yeah. possible, what's not possible. Yeah. Is can this person be on red carpet? Can this person can I brand this person? Or is this someone's gonna be behind the mic and behind the screen and we're just gonna hear the, what so as I was working with Gary, I'll give you an example with him. 
I he was, you know, very Seattle, very <laughs> Seattle. Right. I'm just going to say it. Uh, flowery shirts and uh, Birkenstocks, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but the, and the whole time I was looking at him and going, you know, he's got really good bone structure. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's thin. He's fit. He's got good bone structure. Hmm, I might be able to I might be able to turn this guy into a superstar as far as the way he looks, yeah, yeah. because he's got he's got the skeletal structure to be he could do it. It's all about because I'm in fashion. I know how to take someone and completely. Yeah. I can just transform people, but if you got the bone structure to go with it, yeah, it makes yeah. it a lot easier and good hair, you know, <laughs> he's got good hair <laughs> and, um, attractive, you know? So I was like, okay, so first thing we needed to do was get their materials. And right now with Gary, with me, he's with first take PR. Yeah. He's a client and he's in pre PR right now. And mm -hmm. that's building the, the kits, the tools and everything he needs so we can actually yeah. be, doing full PR with him. He's not quite at that yet because we're still building him. Yeah, yeah. But um, needed a website and we finished that. That'll be launching on Monday. Um, everything's oh, debuting, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, because it all kind of, you know, and then he has a very, a big body of music already, mm -hmm. which is quite good. Um, but it's now time to define and specifically pinpoint what are you doing? Because yeah. it's it's kind of, it's a very eclectic mix of music. So now it's not, it's too eclectic to market. Mm. So we have to really hone in on a style and we have to hone in on. Yeah, building an audience, building yeah. a, a tribe, if you will. Yeah. Who, yeah. Getting the cultural dynamic going on. Yeah. So. And, and the client, then they have to be open to doing that and they have to be open to making those types of decisions. Mm -hmm. It's a very difficult thing to do, especially if you do a lot. Well, I kind of want to do this and I kind of want to, I'm good at this too. Yeah. And, yeah. But what is really going to sell you? And that is the most important thing. So with we have a team, a 24, uh, I have a 24 plus member uh, for photography team. Wow. And um, that he has been a very big uh, influence with Agenda. He's he's really helped make the look of Agenda and Ash Gupta and his company, 838 Media Group. And he has like a an entourage of photographers and wow. retouchers and you name it, videographer, yep. everything. So we did a quote unquote America's next top model shoot with Gary <laughs> okay. um, mm -hmm. and uh, pulled clothes from some top designers and had stylists there. And we basically looked at him, studied him. I gave people mood boards and I told Gary to pick Gary, go on the internet, I don't care what it is, dream big, whatever you like, what resonates with you as a look, yeah. give it to me. Even if it doesn't look like you, I don't care. Just yeah. give me what you like. And so he gave me a big mood board, which included some like Johnny Depp and some pretty big Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, yeah. yeah and, and some really cool actors and stuff too. And I said, and I wanted actors. I wanted yeah. like people who are A listers. I don't, don't give me anything that's not A list. Only go on and find the A-listers and send me what you like because we're creating that. Yeah, yeah. And so we took his uh, compilation of images from the mood board. Mm -hmm. um, for those that don't know, a mood board is just a collage of images to give you an idea of how to dress if you're a stylist, if you want to, to pull from. Certain look that kind of expresses who you are, right, yeah. Gary? Yes. But, but uh, then is also something that you might want to aspire to, but... Not necessarily been your norm, I guess that's what you were. Yeah, I would say so for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I want to interrupt here for a second. I want to ask Gary, through this process, you know, you're used to doing music. You've been in studios. You know, you've probably worked with a number of producers. And how was this process now different? And how did you, you know, probably were like ah, a little reluctant at first, but how did this all play out for you? Oh, it's been great. Um, yeah, I've worked with a lot of different people, but mostly back home in Seattle. So I, although my latest album that I did in Irvine kind of gave me a little bit more of a feel of the Southern California scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, where, uh, where did you record at? Um, Sherman sound suite in Irvine. Okay. Rick Sherman is a great guy, a keyboard player and singer, okay. um, long time resident of orange County. Yeah, yeah. So I've met him through a, um, a referral like about uh, two weeks after I moved here. And uh, and we, and went in. I was. I remember. I was nervous, of course, because it's this big building. They film 
all sorts of stuff there too, like the uh, Housewives of, of Orange County. Okay. It's just that same building in you know, Von Carmen. But anyway, so I was kind of the scared kid coming in. But after a couple of weeks in the studio, and it was all my own stuff. Um, he was really. We got to be really tight friends, and and uh, I felt really good about the whole experience. So awesome. Uh, so that that's been my calling card that album that I did yeah. it's called from orange County with love. <laughs> I, I wanted to come up with a title that re- referred to being the first thing in California. Plus I'm a big James Bond fan. So it was, you know, the second James Bond film. I just kind of thought of it one night that that sounds kind of Rollins, catchy. Yeah. Very Lee Rollins. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> so, um, and, and that's the track that Kayleen was referring to earlier comes from that album. So, so that, that's, uh, but the thing is, meeting Bunny Brunell and and having him on the recording was a big deal because you know Bunny's played with iconic, yeah, so many people, and I'm a huge record collector too. We miss vibe. you, Bunny. I wish you'd have came up here today, but uh, I know yeah. that you've got more important things doing. Mm-hmm. Making ratatouille. <laughs> so, so, so he's played uh, with a lot of the people that I've collected records of for yeah. years. So that's 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 a big deal. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I met him first as a, a, a fan. Went to a clinic, uh, got a chance to uh, uh, hear him play, and then all of a sudden I spent a lot of money because he played. So that's how it works, right? <laughs> you know, I bought a bass amp and a bunch of other stuff at a different manufacturer. He's not with those guys anymore. Mm. We won't mention any names. So, mm-hmm. but with that said, I I feel you. And then we become good friends, and that's how I met the lovely Kayleen. And next thing you know, we're doing all these cool things together, working to help bridge artists to the to their fans, and that's really what it's all yeah. about. No, and also, um, that's really what I've needed. Um, you know, you, you kind of spin your wheels, especially in a new, huge city. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's, uh, I, uh, I guess you could say, you know, I, I worked at it um, by sitting in in lots of places, meeting all sorts of different people, and that's what led to yeah, it. Yeah. You, you have to get out there. Yeah. But you still don't really know what you're doing. Um, well, and until I, and you meet somebody like Kayleen, and then you can you can get direction. And I think that's pretty much the case for most artists, because the the, the process before was was not complicated. It was difficult as all hell, and most people couldn't get into that that process. But you you know you start off uh, as a player, like you mentioned in Garage Band, the indie version. You 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 learn some stuff, especially probably from Seattle. You probably did, did a number number of uh, grunge groups back in the day actually i wasn't into the grunge thing really? at all I'm, I'm more of a folky jazz guy okay. pop guy and to be honest when the grunge thing hit um you were out of there yeah well i should have been really but <laughs> um you couldn't get a gig very easily if you weren't a grunge band and i had i had one band that was a really good horn band we, we did some r&b we did a lot of different styles we couldn't get a gig so yeah. a lot of the people in that band just went back to where they came from and stuff like that. Yeah. I should have I should have made the, the pilgrimage yeah. then, but yeah. I wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, everything's timing, right? So, but yeah, as you go through that process, the next thing you know, maybe you play a club, and you meet somebody in A and R, you know, a friend that has a friend, and yeah, you, know, you might get signed to a deal where you're getting developed, and then you start to see that process where somebody comes in to help you. You get groomed quite often. It's not what you want, but you. You have to go with it because you're getting, you're hoping to get paid, as, you know, as you sell albums. And then if you're really lucky, you know, eventually you sell a ton of albums and you become a well-known artist. That doesn't work out anymore like that today. And uh, what we find is that artists have to do that all themselves. But they're artists. I, you know, it would be very difficult for, you know, speaking of Seattle, Jimi Hendrix to make it today, because he, I, I can't see his personality or the. Or the you know the, the the nature of what you know he's like a pure artist. He's not going to go out and do social media for himself. Usually, if he is, he's you know he he wants to be an artist. So it's a very tough time. So I think the system that you have, the methodology, where you discover how that artist really wants to to develop and where they want to go and how they want to create their messaging, and then from there bring along a lot of the the, the you know the things that uh, the labels did before. But do it with their best interest in mind versus doing it with the label's best interest in mind. Is that kind of a... That's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it, that's it. It's like, it's like a label. In yeah. fact, his single is going on Bugsy Music, which uh, is my label. Oh, awesome. Because um, he doesn't have his own label, yeah. but, um, which I have no problem doing that at all. Yeah. And um, we've already put the single up on Bandcamp for sale. It's for sale right now oh, on great. Bandcamp. So, um, but... That all that money goes to him. I don't want his money. 
yeah. you know, it has nothing to do with that more so than, um, it's all about developing talent, um, and the brand and the brand and building the brand and and having the subject understand that it's all about branding anyway and marketing and it, you know and I'm kind of a taskmaster yeah. <laughs> so it's almost like just there there's steps to everything yeah, yeah. and you don't announce before it's time you don't it's do it the right way and always put out the best you yeah, put there's the best a structure before. there's a strategy yeah. and there's a action plan timeline yeah. so the a lot of dialogue in corporate America, but not necessarily for the artists, but it's a needed, you know, it's a needed uh, process for, you know, the development of any brand, whether it be a ketchup or whether it be mm. a jazz artist. So, exactly. But with that said, let's go, let's, you know, this is, uh, I'm going to set this up a little bit. This is you playing lead guitar with some background vocals from Kayleen, Bunny Brunel on bass, the uh, Christmas song, right? Right. Uh, the originally done by Nat King Cole yeah, yeah. in 1946, written by Mel Torme, actually. Yeah, actually, yeah. probably my favorite Christmas song. Yeah, yeah it is It yeah. is a classic. So we uh, just, I had a certain arrangement, and then we just sort of augmented that. All right, well, we're going to take a look right now.
that was awesome, man. I, it is an incredible video. You know, what was that experience for you to, to, you know, do the video and, you know, what was some of your favorite, uh, you know, experiences with it? Well, it wasn't too tough really because I'd already done this photo shoot, which was pretty amazing. So when we, when we did the, the video too, I, I kind of just went back to that mode of, of like I was doing the photo shoot again. So, and she's, she's really great at directing. That's really what it comes down to when you have someone that knows how to direct you. Yeah. You just sort of fall into place. It's, it's not hard. Now, did you storyboard it or how did you, what was your process in building the video? Uh, this one was completely off the cuff because we were doing a holiday single and it hit me, you know, if I'm going to, if we're going to sell this single to people, meaning let them know about it, there's got to be a video. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a harebrained idea last minute. Okay. I didn't even storyboard. I said, okay, just get over here. When are you free? Yeah. I called my stylist, uh, Shahada Kareem. Mm -hmm. She does all the beauty and grooming. Yeah. And I said, when can you come? And we, I got to shoot this. We got to just get, I have like, you know me, I have all these film cameras and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and I just pulled it out. Already got the production already. Completely. Yeah. I completely like gorilla it. I mean, it was just like in the house. Bunny happened to be there. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I, he loves to make, he loves to feed people. Right. So yeah. he was going to make coffee anyway. I said, Oh, let me, you'll see it, as you saw on the thing. I think I'm going to go in business yeah. with him doing yeah. a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. So, um, basically it ended up being a good old fashioned two people playing on a, you know, yeah. at home, just kind of thing. And then I infused, um, other clips from, I say holiday related B roll. Yeah. Just kind of cut it together. And, and the song, the song is so pretty anyway. Yeah. Um, that, the, it just tells the story musically, you know. It was fun. It was, you know. Well, yeah. it's, the, it's the start of something great for sure. That <laughs> definitely is the case. Now, you also brought in, an, because you're, you know, Gary is one of a number of people that you're working with. You've brought another video that uh, uh, that you wanted to share with people. Yes. Um, this is a artist from Pakistan, in fact. His name is um, Daniel Zell. Mm -hmm. And he is... Um, this is not his first hurrah, yeah. but, um, this particular video was created for, through Indie Hotspot. Okay. Um, Ash Gupta directed this okay. and the team, of course, as I said, the entourage, yeah. um, very polished and, um, the song is just breathtaking. Um, and he's, the guy is also, a, Daniel is also a dancer as well as a singer. And he produced his record, but um, he's also dancing with his co-star in this um, video. Um, I'm sorry. Can I look up her name? Yeah, I apologize. Please do. I didn't write it down. Let me see if I can. Oh, here we go. Um, Inja Zelta. Okay. She's a holiday issue two, uh, issue nine face of the month. Mm -hmm. She's a model, and um, so we combined all of our things together for Bringing that. Bringing fashion well. and music together. All yeah, on yeah. And um, the name of the it's called track? Blue Butterfly. Blue Butterfly by Danielle. Danielle Zell. Zell. It's it's on YouTube right now. If you all look right. that up, you can see it. It's, it's a beautiful video, and, and the it, song is just it's kind of a pop. Yeah. Um, very nice, poppy, lyrically. A lot of dancing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. here we go. We're going to go ahead and play this right now.
lost inside you My love, call me crazy now Cause I done lost it to my mind over you Can't get over you Ooh, I love you so Baby, so come my way
Wow. Again, another amazing job there, Kayleen. Uh, thank you very much for bringing these to us and letting us showcase these. Are we the first? Or is this? No, this is a debut. This is a debut. Yeah, so. I've given the, are we doing Changing Stage? Well, the Changing Stage is a show, and obviously the network's InterTalk, yeah. so it gets a little confusing sometimes. So <laughs> InterTalk is you, I, I gave you the exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome! Well, hey, you have it here, folks. This is this is amazing. So, last minute thoughts here. What's next? What are you going to be doing? What are some of the other um, tactics, strategies that you're going to be, up, you know, applying to to get Gary up and out? So with Gary, um, so as I said, the the website launches on Monday. The video will be out now that we've um, talked about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, his single is for sale now. And um, we're just going to move into phase two and get him a little bit more visibility. Some, he's going to be working on this album. For He's going to be doing a complete Christmas album. So this is a single that's going to be on a Christmas album. That so it'll be featured on another album. That's cool. Yeah. So right now it's just a single, but yeah. it will be on an album that he's going to finish by May. Okay. Okay. So we can get it in the books, you know, the distributor books. Yeah, time. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, and that's pretty much it. Just uh, keep pushing him forward and getting him uh, the tools so that he can actually be the artist that he was meant to be. Cause yeah. He's very talented. You awesome. Know? Awesome. Well, with that said, I wanted to find out from artist to artist because I'm a bass player. Uh -huh. Not quite a bunny bass player. I don't, I don't, you know, that's, that's a whole that's other. That's a tall order. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, um, for our friends that do gear like at Artesia and, and uh, Arturia and any name that has, starts with A in the music industry. I'm just joking. We seem to work with a lot of those kind of guys. Um, what are some of the, uh, the, the, the the gear that you work with? Well, I have a lot of instruments. Um, I'm a Martin guy. I have five Martin guitars. Oh, awesome. I've got uh, the, the, the guitar. Any of the I'm, old ones? Or, uh, oh, they're 70s. Okay. Um, and I've got a, a custom model, too. I've got a D45. That's kind okay. of my main acts but i have the david crosby model um d18 dc which is a really nice uh, oh, wow. quilted mahogany that was that was a limited to i think 250 i can't remember now but um i was lucky to buy that at the time when it came out um the guitar i'm using on on the single is um my gibson es335 oh okay dot neck reissue I'm oh man blonde you know so I'm, I'm big on the natural i had a 12 string at one time in my life oh wow i sold it i want to kill myself People never sell your gear, especially your guitars, because they all come out. Oh, let's do this. Let's t take out uh, the, so people can see this. You got to go out and buy the magazine, folks. But uh, there is the photo spread. Great pictures, man. These are awesome. Thank you. I can see the Keanu Reeves uh, influence <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> I'm also using on this uh, recording uh, my 1967 Blackface Fender Super Reverb, oh. which with the blue back Jensen speakers, it's a, that's my baby amp. I, I don't carry it around with me to gigs because it's just too much, Dang. especially in a small car now. But when you want the sound, it's worth toting it around for in the studio. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That is awesome, man. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more. We, we're, you're always welcome to premiere your, your music here, and uh, we can always go more in-depth on the passion that we have for the different artists, whether it be a Sonny Rollins. Henry Rollins <laughs> or a Gary Lee Rollins. So. Ooh, that's catchy. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> can I still add? <laughs> you can, I, I charge though. I'm gonna have to. I'll have to get my, uh, you know, get my fee there. So, but yeah. uh, I thank you folks for coming out, Kayleen. It's always a pleasure, and uh, I'm gonna miss you guys for for Christmas this year. I'm going up north to to the family, yeah. but we'll try to pass through and get some lunch with you and Bunny. And you know, uh, Gary, when you get the show going on, man, let me know. We'll be out there. You bet. All right. Thank you. This has been The Changing Stage, folks, on Intertalk Media. Stay tuned for the next program. Yeah.